Chapter 16. Khaldun's Word. Etienne was trying to memorize a verse from the Quran. Pacing the red tiled arcade that circled the patio of the fountain, he closed his eyes, the better to feel the sounds in his throat. Concentrating on the flow of words, he walked faster and faster, forgot to duck, passing under an arch, and whacked his head so hard, stars flared. <sighs> Reeling, trying not to shout in pain, he saw Ali Khaldun rushing towards him through a blur of tears. Eyes red with weeping and swollen like dumplings, the old man wailed, and his high-pitched voice reverberated in Etienne's head. Cries like a shikimu that has lost its young, like a jackal in the full moon. Etienne took hold of the man's frail shoulders, both to calm down him and to keep from falling. But Ali Khaldun slipped through his hands like a sack of grain, fell to his knees, and grabbed Etienne around the ankles. Etienne swayed and sat down fast on the floor, just missing Ali Khaldun, the vaulted corridor spinning around him. Other students laughed in the distance. Etienne found Ali Khaldun's hand and patted it soothingly. I'm all right, old uncle. I knocked my full head on an arch, nothing worse. Not you, Ali Khaldun broke in. Him! Etienne sat back, disappointed. Who then? He asked, rubbing his head. Word came to Mullah Saladin from his brother Shika Safa. And Nibula said to me, Go, Ali Khaldun, go and tell us here that his Halima is dead, lost on the great sand sea. Etienne, already queasy, felt his skin go cold. Ali Khaldun, speak slowly, please. You say that Halima, Atia's cousin Halima, is dead? Lost and given up for dead on the great sea, the desert that has no mercy. Ali Khaldun broke into sobs. And you have told him? Ali Khaldun nodded. As if I myself had held a dagger to his breast and said, die, my son. But you didn't. You didn't, old uncle. Where is Atiyah, Ali Khaldun? Atiyah's mind was in a whirl. What would Atiyah do? Act first and think later. Ali Khaldun gave a snort. The prince has gone to Saladin to get horses. He will ride forth. He will not die until hope for his Halima is dead. Did he send you to me, Ali Khaldun? Ali Khaldun nodded, but Etienne didn't know if he had heard. I want to go with him, uncle. I need your help. Will you help me find him? He is at Mullah Saladin's palace in the new town trying to get horses. Ali Khaldun's face twisted suddenly. His voice wavered and rose. Saladin will not give him horses. Saladin cares nothing for Halima. Saladin only wants to keep our prince captive in this town. He began walking, hobbling rapidly, so that Etienne was hard put to keep up and make out the old man's words. How do you know that Saladin doesn't care about Halima? Isn't she his niece, the daughter of his brother? He asked as they turned out into the street that led toward the new town. Saladin has no heart. He promised to give me gold so I can buy medicine for my wife. He promised to give me work in my old age. Watch out for the boy, he tells me. And how is the boy, he asks me. But then he says, be sure he stays here, Ali Khaldun. And if he should ever think of leaving, be sure you tell me before it's too late or you will be the one to suffer. Ali Khaldun paused for breath, leaning against a wall. Suffer, he muttered contemptuously. There is no cauldron but has a cooked meal of mourning. Etienne frowned. 
feeling as thoughts unravel and disperse. A meal of mourning? Why do you think Saladin will not give Atia horses? Ali Khaldun struggled to walk and to talk at the same time. Because, ah, I have told you, Saladin wishes to keep our prince prisoner in Fez. The mullah will be glad Halad Halima is dead. Our caliph himself wants Atia to become ulama. <sighs> Even the rulers of our time do not fathom the heart of Hatia. They were crossing the bridge over into the new town, which was being built for the followers of the caliph. Newly planted gardens cascaded down to the river, already lush, and little windmills pumped water up to the top of the ridge to grow pomegranates for the wealthy. Ali Khaldun pulled his burnous closer around his face and staggered urgently toward a gate in the high wall. <clears throat> a guard greeted him by name and they were given entrance. Saladin himself met them in the courtyard. Swishing his white robes across the blue tiles, he paced and turned, clasping their hands in his own, exhibiting grief and sympathy. Saladin clapped his hands and two servants came in, dragging Atia between them. They set him upright, unsteady as a rolled carpet. His face was hidden, his toes pointed strangely inward. Take my dear nephew, said Saladin. I give him into your care. See, he's kept safe. The poor boy has suffered a great shock. We've all suffered a shock. He must rest in bed until he has regained his strength and composure. Poor, poor boy. Etienne cleared his throat. <clears throat> uh, might you lend us a horse, respected Mullah? Atia seems so weak. The exercise will do him good, said Saladin hastily. Atia allowed himself to be handed over. Etienne guided him painstakingly out through the palace gates and then slung him over one shoulder, locking his arms behind Atia's knees. Tiredly, he and Ali Khaldun retraced their steps down the steep streets to the river, then up again to the university on the other side. At last, they reached the door of Atiyah's student room. Ali Khaldun sank onto a bench in the corridor, his hands pressed to his chest, breathing heavily. Etienne took Atiyah into his room and threw him down on the bed, then closed the door and leaned his head against it. He sighed wearily. His head ached. He considered whether to slap Atiyah's face with cold water and try to wake him or take a nap first. A nap, he decided. A sound made him turn. Atiyah peeped out of his burnous, his eye wary and lively as a bird's when it's hatching from an egg. Fooled you, he said, raising an eyebrow, alert as ever. Atiyah collapsed on the window seat in relief. Atiyah, you scoundrel! You made me carry you. I thought you had been drugged. So did the respected mullah. And I would have been if I hadn't poured the coffee he gave me into one of his tiny oases in a jar. Etienne opened his mouth, but Atia cut him short. She is not dead, Etienne. If Halima were dead and gone from this world, there would be a blackness in my soul as deep as the space between... The stars. Halima is alive somewhere. I'm off to find her. Atiyah's eyes weren't swollen like dumplings. They flashed with enthusiasm. Atiyah laughed, and laughing made his head throb again. He reached up and felt a goose egg growing from his scalp. Horses, said Etienne. Where can we get horses? Hatia flung his arms around him with a shout. You are coming then. We will risk our lives. We, we will gallop across the sands, fleeter than moon shadows, never resting. Where do we even begin to search, Atia? Atia slumped down suddenly on his cot, burying his head in his hands. Then he was up again, spinning around the room. Oh, sorry, springing around the room. Here is what Saladin heard. For, oh, this is Atia. Uh, Atia. 
Here is what Saladin heard from Isafa. They were on their way from our summer camping place to the Wadi Hamamat. A sandstorm blew up. Her camel came untied from the others. Esafa has searched, searched all around their route. No traces. And the whole route lies through a desert? Through a rocky part of the sand sea. Some Shumari have their tents pitched at some day's journey from the route Esafa took, but they have seen no one. Etienne, sitting on the other cot, opened his mouth again. He shut it slowly, thinking. Do you know these Shumari? Ah, no. They are not good people. Not worth knowing. Maybe she tried to ride across the sand sea to Fez. Only for me would she leave her father. But Halima is wise from what you say and knows the desert. Surely she would have known that it is impossible to cross the sand sea alone without provisions. Perhaps she had provisions. A tia. Etienne broke in. Listen, Ali Khaldun has told me Saladin asked him to watch you here. Maybe he knows. Atia was on his feet. He threw open the door, calling for Ali Khaldun. Only a faint gurgle answered him. Ali Khaldun was slumped on the tiles of the corridor. Etienne and Atia lifted the old man gently to carry him to Atia's cot. There would be no use asking him questions. Ali Khaldun was dead.